Hello dudes, Axel here. So, um, this video, I've realized that I've done videos, well, a few videos that are just in general, hey, here's my setup, let's take a quick look at it. But I've never really gone in depth into exactly what I use to make my videos and to do my streams and whatnot. So, I'm gonna start. So, to begin with, for today's video, we are going to talk about my capture card, or capture device. Yeah, if we can get a focus on that. It's the Magewell USB 3 HDMI capture video, video capture dongle thing. And it's pretty cool. So we're going to keep this pretty short and simple. I'm going to go over some pros and cons about why I love this thing and why it might also not be so great. So, um, of course, the title, as you can see, kind of clickbaity, except I actually answered the question asked in it. Is this the best capture device ever, and why do I think it is for me? So, we're going to start with the pros. First off, there are no drivers for it. It is completely plug and play. You just plug it in. The computer, like, basically recognizes it as a webcam, and you're just ready to go, just like that. Uh, so, two... There's also no special software or anything to worry about, so you just plug it in and you can use your favorite video capture software that can pick up webcams and stuff, So like, which is especially great for streaming. You don't need to worry about like incompatibilities with certain stuff like OBS or something. Like I know some capture devices actually don't play nicely with OBS. Usually they do with XSplit though, but XSplit's not free. OBS is free, XSplit is not. So I will always stand by OBS because I use it for like everything now. I'm using OBS to record this right now, but we're going to have a video on OBS coming later. Stay tuned for that. Anyway, yeah, no special software to worry about. No drivers. You just plug it in. Use your favorite capture software. Boom. You're mostly good to go. Just got to worry about configuring stuff, which uh, my only experience configuring settings with it is with OBS anyway. And it's very easy to do in my experience just set the resolution frame rates boom you're good to go that's it other than that you can pretty much get uncompressed footage from this thing it's fantastic um, speaking of as far as resolution and frame rate goes full 1080p 60 fps no questions asked fantastic and um since it's through usb 3 if you only have one monitor, now I don't, I have two, but I still like to do it this way anyway. If you only have one monitor, you can basically play it like, like if you're recording a console game, you can basically just play that through OBS. And as far as I have seen, there is like almost no noticeable latency. There might be a tiny bit. So if you're doing like any competitive stuff or whatever, it might not be the best idea. But other than that, it is perfectly fine. For recording games and stuff like recording console games or if you you're fancy and have a setup to where you have like two pcs one for streaming one for recording that or whatever just whatever you plug in through this latency is almost not even noticeable in fact i usually don't notice it except for like very very super precise tight moments which even then it's still pretty good so usb3 basically no latency it's fantastic there as well and any, like, for the most part, all the processing in terms of, like, resolution changes and scaling and whatnot is all done on the card. So if you don't have the strongest CPU, that's fine. You got it covered with this thing. As great as that sounds, there are definitely some cons with it. Uh, the first one, the biggest one, this, this, this little device here costs 300 US dollars. So right off the bat definitely not something for everybody there is also no hdmi pass through so if you don't want to play it like directly through your capture software or anything you will need a splitter so if you're not super sensitive to like input lag and whatnot that's not too big of a problem you can just play it through your capture software but if you i want to make sure you have the absolute latent most latency free gameplay possible you'll want an hdmi splitter um another thing now as i said i did say it as a pro earlier but for some people it could be a con because since it doesn't come with any bundled software you would need to get something like obs or xsplit or whatever 
because um, you don't get anything that comes with the device. It's just you pretty much get it as is just this and a USB 3 cable. That's all you get in the package. So you do need to have your own capture software in mind if you want to pick up one of these. And also, it only has HDMI input. In this day and age, that's not the worst case scenario, but if you want to record like older consoles and stuff, you're going to need to get either an adapter or something, or just a different capture device altogether. So, um, other than that though, other than that, while it is expensive, it is very, very well built. Like, this thing feels quality. And, of course, that can mean a, dif I mean a different thing depending on who you're watching, but it feels very solid, very nice machined aluminum, so very nice construction. At least it feels that way to me. I'm not an expert on this stuff, but feels very nice. And um, in a second here, I'm going to probably, as I'm saying this part, I'm going to show some footage from Breath of the Wild real quick so you guys can get an idea like, okay, this is how it looks. Um, I would do other games as well, but I'm kind of lazy, as many of you who watch me regularly know. So, here's some Breath of the Wild footage. As you can see, looks quite nice. And I've heard some people saying, like, with certain um, types of audio input or something like the, the audio can get kind of delayed or messed up or something. I never noticed that. So, I don't know how widespread of a problem that might be, but in my use case, I have had absolutely zero problems caused by the card itself. So, final thoughts. You've heard the pros, you've heard the cons, you might be asking yourself, okay Axel, why do you like it so much? You've listed like general pros and cons to the thing itself, but why do I consider it the best capture card for me? Um, pretty much, uh, the biggest thing is the fact that since there are no drivers and it's completely plug and play and stuff, you know, it, it also happens to work across Windows, Mac, and Linux. And as some of you may know, I do use Linux. Not 100% because there's still some Windows based games that I like to play and like a few other niche little reasons, but for the most part, I am primarily a Linux user. So having this, like this is pretty much the best capture device I could have had. Like, and well, the best one I've been able to find for people who use Linux. So for my purposes, it is fantastic. And just even in general, like um, even if I was still Windows only, if I needed a new capture card and I found this thing, if I was able to put up the money. This would be a very strong contender, even regardless of that, but it, it especially because I'm a Linux user, I definitely wanted this thing, because there's really, I couldn't find any better option that I knew would work with Linux. So, if you are on Windows, as many of you watching probably are, you can probably, you'll probably find some better solutions, some cheaper solutions, because $300 is a lot to put down for one of these things. But if it fits your use case and if you want just great quality and you don't want to worry about drivers or metal software or anything, if you're willing to spend $300, this thing is great. If you're not, I don't blame you. Something like an Elgato HD60 or other equivalent stuff would probably be fine. But for me, this is the best damn capture card that I could ask for. So, that being said... Next time around, I have talked about it several times throughout this video, next time we are going to go over why I use OBS and what my settings and setup for that is. So till then, this has been Axel, thank you guys for watching, if you have any questions, comments, you know where to leave them, you can also hit me up on Twitter at Axel94. Till then, this has been Axel, thank you guys for watching, I'll see you guys in the next one. And then we have an awkward cut because I did not plan this out very well. Oh, you guys, you just, you guys probably love the blooper segments, don't you? More, more, more people need to do blooper segments. They really do, because you know that either they do it all in one take, or 
they only do one take that doesn't have any mess ups for those that don't edit a lot. But no, no, we're we're not we're not being that lazy about it. So instead, you guys are getting extra long bloopers. You know what? Yeah, we're, we're, we're going to make that a thing. We're going to make that a thing. Starting here. Well, not starting here, but kind of officially becoming a thing here. All my blooper stuff is going to be at the end of videos, and it's going to be great. Yeah. Well, great in the sense that you get to see everything. Ha ha. Anyway, I should probably actually get to the rest of this thing. Because I've literally only recorded that intro segment so far. And you guys are still watching this blooper segment. Wow, that's... Bravo. Bravo. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, so... Let's talk a little bit about... Yeah, <laughs> fuck. So, let's talk a little bit about why I love... <laughs> um, there is also no HDMI pass-through as I kind of alluded to earlier. Well, actually, no, I didn't. But, like I said, if if you're not, like, super sentensive... Sen sentensive? Sentensive. Why are they called capture cards, anyway? Like, they're not cards. They're, they're devices. Capture device. It's just capture cards kind of always been the thing. I guess because card could kind of refer to like the um, the circuit board or something. You got like TV tuner cards. And that's like circuit board thing. Yeah. And I feel like there was something else I was going to say about it. All right, probably final thoughts. 